Fortuna has finally landed on Xbox and PlayStation 4 as of today. It is now actually live, which means obviously the Orb Valis is there and this place. It just it goes so well at this time of year with the whole wintry feel to it. It's I wish they did this to the plains last winter because the plains is green and it just had no winter effect to it. It did have that Plague Star event, but oh, I would have given anything to have had it snowy, but hey, I'll take an entire snow map. Just, it looks so nice. There is obviously caves, which are just... Some of these look absolutely amazing, and there's 30 of them in total, and I'm still missing five of them. I just, I can't seem to find them. I've even looked up guides and maps and everything else and still can't find my way into these five caves. I just, I don't know. The enemies out there, obviously new kinds of enemies, but eh, not so different. There's still the corpus. There is, then of course, Solaris itself. Eh, Solaris? Fortuna itself and the Solaris united inside of it. You will of course first before you do anything else have to do the Vox Solaris quest which oh how do you explain this without too many spoilers it's a basically a introduction to the members of Solaris united and at the same time an introduction to the Orb Valus itself and honestly it's yeah okay it's a bit long-winded but yeah it as long as you don't have the well you shouldn't have the bugs that were there on PC because this is why it's been so late all of the known bugs should have been fixed but the members inside are actually interesting uh, let's put it that way you have Uri, which is the one responsible for the bounties and, yeah, Voxelorus quest-related things, can't go into that. The business himself, which, yeah, he's an interesting one. He's basically fishing and conservation. There is Legs, who is mainly Moa companions. There is Smokefinger, who is the mining person. The changes to mining are actually... Really, really interesting. Rudzud, who is kit guns, of course, kit guns have also come with this, and honestly, yes, there may only be four chambers at the moment, but they've already introduced, what is it, four new MOA parts that will be coming in the future, but aren't here yet, so we'll ignore those for now, and I think it's three heads for legs, and four chambers for Rudzud, and then there's the, the basic mastery for these, ignoring, of course, uh, oh, I forgot their names. Is it R Roki and Boon? The Vent Kids. These are the ones who are going to have the new form of transport, the K-Drive. And yes, I know, I've actually got it right for once, rather than calling it a keyboard. so just throw that in there because lots of people like to tell me off for calling it a keyboard. Eh, gotta add it just for the sake of it. Key drives are really interesting, there is three of these for mastery and these are actually, they're a pain to level up. Quite painful actually, they take way too long. So you, as you can imagine, three of them is going to take three times as long. But people have found ways around this and ways to kind of trick it into levelling up. Most of which has now been fixed anyway, so won't get too much into that. But do like the actual key drives. The more I use them, the more I'm getting used to them. But it's never going to take place of Arcwing because Arcwing can get you across Orb Valis much, much quicker. And of course, Ger Garuda herself is here, and this is where the conflict between what they say and what this is come into play. They say this is 24.1.1.1, but the 24.1.2 changes to Garuda have made their way into this, so she is exactly as she is on PC. Minus the fact that they haven't fixed the 
the issue with the range on Blood Altar and her first ability, um, Dread Mirror, the, it's still going to have a much longer range on console than it does on PC, so that will probably be fixed in a hotfix. Not straight away, but fairly soon, but honestly, it's not going to make that much difference. It just means that, was it, Dread Mirror is going to work much better. Blood Altar, same thing. Bloodletting is going to work the same as it always has, and Seeking Talon is going to have that uh, reduced charge time, which means you can fire it better and better accuracy because they increase the minimum Seeking charge size and reduce the maximum, so it's a smaller cone, but it means it's much better to aim. She really is good, and of course it's going to come with her alternate helmet and her weapon, the Nagantaka? It's basically a zuge, a huge, a huge, but hmm, it's. I'm still not sure which one's actually better. There's nothing really wrong with this thing. Its alternate fire will empty the magazine, but it is still a good weapon. There is the Kreska, which is the corpus-based melee thing. There is the Okiko, which is the secondary corpus thing, all researchable in the. Corpus Lab inside of Dojo's and the batter core that I managed to just get the video out yesterday for this because well it was a weird one to actually play with because it does have that charged ability like the Opticore does but it just seems to do it a little bit better. It's not damage wise, it's nowhere near the same damage as the Opticore. The Opticore is definitely better, but the beam on this, the secondary fire, has this weird you have to charge it with kills and then release it. So its secondary is based on its primary because you've got to get the kills with the primary to be able to fire the secondary, and the secondary has amazing punch through. It is really good. There is the Oculus Sentinel. This thing basically has this scan life form ability which increases the maximum activity of conservation encounters which to be honest I kind of wish this thing had a it will automatically scan them for you kind of like Helios does ability to it which is why I haven't covered it yet because I haven't gotten that much into the conservation thing but the sentinel itself does look pretty nice and weirdly it came with a new Precept mod, assault mod, assault mode mod, <laughs> and it's kind of, it's just weird, it can be used on Worm, Carrier, Death Cube, Taxon, they can all use this and depending on the Sentinel you're using it will just kind of change how the range basically on where you will be able to attack people because some of them have got long range, some of them are close range. This is kind of a mid range. And then the very overlocked mod for beasts or companions, Kubras and Kavats basically, they're calling them beasts, Fetch. The Fetch mod is basically vacuum for beasts. It's got a radius of 11.5 meters. It will automatically pick things up. So now you can run your Kavat or your Kubro and not have to worry about not having that vacuum mod. They now have their own, but it's called Fetch. Then there are other smaller things like the UI for Fortuna. Sadly, you've got to buy this in two parts. There's the UI and then there's the background image, and I kind of wish it came as one. A few Arcwing mods. There's the Beast mods. It's actually not including the other one, but it has the... It's the dual stat mods, which a lot of people have kind of not noticed. There's the electrical and status chance, heat and status, cold and status, toxin and status for beasts. And these same mods have also been included for Arcwing. Cold, electrical, toxic. That's for the melee. There's three for the gun itself. The fire ones, in case you're wondering, were in an event a long time ago. So the, the dual stat mods are now available on Arcwing and beast mode. And I never covered that for the PC version, so there you go, console update exclusive and the loading thing looks pretty nice, but honestly, it's just, 
I'm kind of glad this is here because there's things that I want to do. The only bad side to all of this added content to console is it's not available for Switch. They are working on the version for the Switch. It will come soon and yes, the keen-eyed people may notice uh, this is actually the launching soon window because at the moment it's not actually live but it is as of this video going up it's just I didn't want to wait until that list actually launches in if I'm honest about an hour from now so it's live you can now go and play it it's probably going to be a rather big update though so you can set this off, get on with your day, and hopefully it might be ready sometime next January. Anyway, we'll leave this off here for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.